Okay. Um, this one right here, it says find the coordinate P such that D has a weight twice as much as point E. So this weight is like two times and this weight is one time. As you know, there is a fancy equation for this. Um, I wouldn't expect most of you to be able to remember it. If you do remember the equation from like your Alex assignments and you feel comfortable using it, you're welcome to use the equation. Um, but I'm going to encourage you just to use the concept to figure this out. So you'll have a piece of graph paper that you can use. And showing you here, I graphed out these points here. So I have D at negative 4, 3 and E at 2, negative 3. And it says D has a weight of 2. So imagine like two blocks here. And then E has a weight of 1. So the balance point would be like right here, actually. And you can visually see this. So you could break this up into three, three equal parts like this. And you can see that the balance point would be right here. And that is at negative 2, 1. And that's the actual answer. Yes, did you have something? So we did at 2, so why is it only at 1? So it says D is twice as much as E. Yeah, so why is the balance point more towards E? Because, like, in order to have it balance i kind of think of like a way to show it like without a scale oh oh like a scale no i get it i know it's kind of trippy um i could show you something else i don't want to confuse anybody because i saw a hack actually oh uh, let me see because one of the curriculum specialists showed us this hack and i don't know if it's too late to like introduce something new where is it? Here it is. Okay, covered up for base. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't know if that's weights or ratios, though. Maybe this would. Yeah, no, I'm not going to introduce anything new. We'll just stick with that. Okay. Um, the next one is ratios. Um, this one here, again, you could graph it out or whatnot. It says you have J at negative 4, 2, and K at 2, 1 right here. Find the coordinates of M on JK that partition the segment into a 3 to 5 ratio. So 3 to 5 would be 8 parts total. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this, one with the graph and then one with the math. So eight parts total. Um, so if I was to break this up in, let's say half, halfway would be right here, like three units and three units. And then halfway of this would be right here and right here. I'm trying to break it up into eight. So I got it in fourths now, and then I'll break it up into eights. Middle here, the middle of, this segment in the middle here. Okay, I broke it up into eights. And then a three to five ratio from J to K would be three units, three parts, and then five parts. So the point is right here. This is M. So what am I doing? I'm literally just like, estimating the eight parts and this is where my m fell and then i'm using the answer choices to narrow down my answer so if i look at these answer choices negative 0.25 1.3 no that's not where m fell so i can cross that out the next one negative 1.75 1.6 that's actually really close that might be my answer and then the next one says negative 1 1.5 no, that's not where my point fell, so nope. And then negative 1.2, 1.8, nope. So it has to be this one, and I just did that visually. The other way to do it with math, I'll show you as well. So like, you could do J is at negative 4, 2, and K is at 2, 1. 
and then we're trying to find the middle, like not the middle, but like M, which is at three to five ratios. So from here to here is six part six units. And then we have eight parts total. So six divided by eight parts is 0.75 units per part. And then you have to do three of those towards K. So like it's three to five ratio. So you have to go three times 0.75 toward K. Three times 0.75. Some of you might be following this if you did this on Alex and felt comfortable. And now it's just bringing in decimals, which is lovely. 2.25. So I got to go 2.25 toward this. So plus 2.25, which gives me negative 1.75. And then over here, there's just one unit divided by 8. Parts, so it's 1.125 per part, and then we have to go three parts. So 0.125 times three. If you're lost, it's okay. You can just use the visual way. 3.75 toward one, so minus 3.7.375, and that would give you the 1.625 they got. What is it? 1.625. So that was fun, y'all. Some of you might be following that, some of you might not. It's okay. Okay, whatever. Just graph it then. <laughs> Normally there isn't decimals. Like, I don't know if that's new, but before it used to always land on whole numbers. I don't know if they introduced this. Uh, anyways, okay. Next one. Trapezoid. Um, what is the area of the figure? For a trapezoid, the area of a trapezoid is on the reference sheet. So if you don't know that equation, it's right here, trapezoid, and that's the formula. And we're going to write that down. Area of a trapezoid is one half height B1 plus B2. Okay, so this is the height. This is base one, this is base two. Um, we need these lengths. So what's nice is they're all horizontal and vertical, so we can count units. However, there's no like squares to count, but what we can do is just use the coordinates. So notice how these Ys are the same, so therefore we can compare the X values. So 14 minus two is 12, so this base is 12 units. I'm gonna circle that because I'm gonna need that for my equation. You also just it. You could if you want to do it that way and count. Um, then for base two, Jace, Jace, I uh, focus up here, thanks. Not. Okay, just put your eyes up here. Okay. okay. It's not about whether you talk, like, focus on what we're doing. Thanks. Um, then here, Y is the same, and we're going to look at the difference here 14 minus 8 is six, so base two is six. Base two equals six, the 14 minus eight is six. Then the height here from five to 13, so the difference between five and 13 would be eight. Okay, now that we have all these numbers for the equation for area, I'm gonna plug it in. Wait, 4 times 18 is 72 units squared. Okay, for perimeter of the shape, we need to add up all the sides. We have that one of the sides is 6, we have another side is 8, another side is 12. This diagonal side right here, um, we have to solve for it because we don't know. Um, we're going to use distance formula to solve for this. 
So distance formula is square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Then using these coordinates off to the side, you get x1, y1, x2, y2, and I'm going to plug these into the equation. Well, it comes out to a nice even 10, so that's nice. Then add these values and you get 36 units. If you happen to do that, you can use Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, you could. Okay, the next one. Okay, so the next one is that Owen's living room is 10 feet by 15 feet. He plans to cover as much of the floor as possible with triangular rugs without overlapping them. If the base of each triangular rug, so triangular rug is seven feet and the height is 2.5 feet, how much of the floor space will be left uncovered? So we have to see how many of these would fit into this area. So this area is 150 feet. Um, and the area of this triangle would be area equals 8.75 feet squared. So each triangle rug is this amount of area. We need to see how many we can fit into this area. So we do 150 feet divided by 8.75 feet. It comes out to 17 point something crazy. 150 divided by 8.75 is 17.14 blah, blah, blah. So 17 rugs can fit on there. So 17 times 8.75 feet per rug equals 148.75 feet squared. And then 150 minus 148.75 equals 1.25 feet squared is what's left over. Okay, next one. Next one, find the coordinates of the missing endpoint if B is the midpoint of AC. Okay, so A is at 2, 1. B is at 10, 4. It wants to know C if B is the midpoint of AC. So this is how we set it up when we learned it. And then we just look at the distance here from the x's and the y's. So like 4 to 1 would be minus 3. So therefore, to get to this number, we would add 3 to get 7. And then here, 10 to 2 would be minus 8. So we just add 8 to get this number, which would be 18. So our number is 18, 7. Which are like our coordinates. Okay. 
Okay, do you want to do the long one or the short one next? Sorry. Short. I don't know what's that. This one, get it done. Okay, we're going to get this one over with because it's the longer. It says, what is the area of this shape? Um, so, area of a triangle is one half base times height. So, this would be the base and this would be the height. Because these are on a diagonal, we can't just count them. We could graph this thing and use Pythagorean theorem if you wanted to. Um, I'm going to just plug it into distance formula. So I'm going to call this x1, y1, x2, y2, and find the distance between these two points. So like x2 minus x1, so negative 2 minus negative 16 is squared, plus y2 minus y1, 8 minus 14 squared. Six squared plus negative six squared, 36 plus 36, square root of, make sure I got square root of 72. Yeah, square root of 72. So the height, square root of 72. It comes out even in the end, I promise, but these numbers right here are kind of weird. Okay, so now we have to find the distance between these two. I have this labeled x2, y2, so I'll just label this x1, y1, and then use that in the equation. x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 squared. I get negative 4 squared plus negative 4 squared. Zoom in more. Start doing it. It might get blurry. 16 plus 16, square root of 32. So, square root of 32 for the base. Area equals one half base, square root of 32. Height, square root of 72. And area equals one half square root of two three zero oh, four. Thirty two times seventy two is this number, um, but this one is actually a perfect square. The square root of two thousand three hundred four is forty eight, and half of forty eight is twenty four. So the answer after all that is just twenty four units squared. Okay. Um, so something like this, I would save till the end of your test because you're maximizing time in class um, and you know it's going to take quite a bit of work to get here. So something like this, I would skip it and then do it at the end of your test. So that way, if you miss this one, you didn't spend like half the class trying to figure it out. Okay. And then over here, it gets easy again. Find the base or height of each triangle. So area of a triangle, one half base times height. Um, they don't give us the base, they give us the height, and they give us area. So area, 48 equals 1 half. Base, we don't know. Height is 12. 48 equals 6B. Divide by 6, B equals 8. Same thing here. This time they gave us base. We don't know height. 90 equals 1 half 15. Height we don't know. And the height equals... Comes out to, it comes out to 12. Okay, we're done for real.